What's up, everybody? Today we're talking about Alex's favorite topic. Debt. That's his favorite one. He <laughs> loves he loves talking about it, loves talking about getting out of it. But we're gonna talk about uh, you know, credit cards. Credit cards, how you how you use them. Uh it's a lot of information on social media about credit cards. So we're not here to talk about that. We're really here to talk about what people that's in that industry talking about credit cards, how to fix your credit, uh, great credit cards and things like that. What they're forgetting about telling you. What part are they missing? That that little nugget that it seems so good to be true. And there's a reason why. So with that being said, Alex, first let's talk about credit cards in general. What's your, what's your feeling on them and what you think people should do with them? I think if people are financially savvy or have a little bit of literacy, then they're an okay tool to use. But I think they're very dangerous for someone that doesn't know how to manage finances. Because I see the same repeated, re the same repeated uh, actions and decisions people make with credit cards that have bad finances. And it has nothing to do with their income or none of that. It's just they're just they just make bad financial decisions. But people that know how to manage their own money, I think credit cards can help them in different ways. Like it gives you that one extra layer of protection because credit card companies are quick to resolve an issue if it's their money. But banks may take some time if because it's your money. So using a debit card may not have the same protection as a credit card in a sense. I think that with credit cards, if someone is managing their finances right, some of those that give like that 13 month free interest um, advantage, I think that can be used if used right. It can benefit you. Right. Yeah. So. When it comes to credit cards, your your view, well, I'm not going to speak your view. I'm asking you. Um, so what's your, what's your view on it? Your your view is, you know, you buy something with a credit card, you pay it off at the end of every month. Or what is what do you do particularly if and when you use a credit card? So if it's my credit cards, normally I'm getting those credit cards that like give you 13 months, 15 months of free interest. And what I do with those is... I especially use them for like when I'm funding uh, like real estate uh, projects, like if I'm doing remodeling and stuff. And because I have that gap of free of like zero interest, I use that to leverage in a sense the other money I have to put towards the deal and then like towards closing. And then also I use that to leverage so that I can have more money to invest with. And then before that interest is due, I pay off the whole card. That, but that's probably more risky for some people. They might be like, oh, I forgot that the date is due and then get charged a whole bunch of interest. So if it's a card that has monthly interest, like, it, like there is no free interest, I'm, I pay off the card every single month. But if it has that gap of free interest, I use that as leverage in a sense. Okay. Okay. That, that makes sense. That makes sense. Uh, there might be something that, well, all my cards don't, my, my, my free, my free time of no interest is gone. Uh, <laughs> but I mean, I like, I like this. I like that strategy. I like that strategy a lot. Um, so with that, so do you, when you know you have another project or you know, you're about to buy another property, do you go out and look for one of those interest-free credit cards and apply for them? Do you do yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. It's funny. Um because it's just it's to me it's like it's almost like a hack, but you have to know that's why I say you have to really manage your money well because some people just like I don't understand how someone can just end up in five, ten thousand dollars of credit card debt. Like and they don't have a card like that. So I'm I'm not using a credit card like that. Like the most time I'll ever rack up into the thousands is like I'm buying materials with it. Like I'm buying all these remodeling materials. And then because I have that huge window, I'll make like a 500 to $800 payment per month rather than just pay it off at once. Cause I could use that money. Like if I like, let's say I buy materials, it costs me four grand. Mm -hmm. 
because I have that window, I'll pay 500, 800 a month to pay off that card rather than pay the four grand because I can use that money to go into my Roth, to go into other stocks, to go into mutual funds rather than pay it towards a card and then have to wait to accumulate that money again to invest. So I try not to delay my investing process. Right. Yeah. So, and, and for me, I, I pay it off as soon as it come. I mean, for me, it's like, because I was one of those people that was in all that credit card debt. She didn't understand how people get into it. Uh, <laughs> me, I was just out yeah. there. Rob I was out there robbing Peter to pay Paul. And I was just, I was just looking for the next day, how to survive that next day. So swipe, 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 swipe. And the, the crazy thing was I always was able to make the minimum payment during that time. I, it wasn't no, uh, oh, you've been in default. I never had that, but I was minimum. I was minimum payment Charlie, you know, hey, hey go to minimum. I was, you know, I would transfer <laughs> to, I would, I would, I would do credit card transfers because during that yeah. time it was given, you know, like 15, 18 months, I would transfer when the interest was due and I didn't have any, uh, when the payment was due and I didn't have no money, I would transfer balance transfer to another card that had no interest for that time, but I would still make, I would always make the minimum payments, minimum payments, uh, along the way. And that that's what I got. I think I went through when I during that time, I th went through like 30 or 40 credit cards, just transfer and balances, transfer and balances, transfer and balance. Because I mean, I didn't have no money. So but I never missed a payment. That was a key yeah. thing. I never missed a payment. But I say about 30 credit cards. And then I went from 30 credit cards. Then once I paid, I finally got out of credit card debt. I went to one. I was at one for forever. Now I think I'm at like four, like two of them are business and then one and the other two is personal. But yeah, so two on the personal side and then I have two on the business side. But yeah, I was I was one of those people. And but it's really just survival. You don't have it. And I'm not saying all the purchases was smart. Oh, they was dumbass purchases. Let's, let's not get it. Let's not get it twisted. I was buying you know, Wendy's, I'm there all the time. So and I'm buying Wendy's, I'm buying food. And that's not what, really what a credit card is for, you know, especially during that time when you ain't got no money. If you just swiping your card at Wendy's to pay it off, that's one thing. But I was swiping just to eat and I ain't have nothing on the back end to pay it. I was literally using their money for real in real life because I ain't had no money of my own. But so with that, so you see, I mean, I don't know you see it. You see the credit repair people out there and they always talking about oh a quick way to re repair your credit uh you know quick hacks to get your credit score up you know how to get business credit and things like that so what do you think about those people so specifically to the business credit or just the people that just are, both 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 at, both halves of it the people that's trying to that come up with quick hacks to increase your credit score to repair your credit and then the people that honestly i think uh, like people trying to give hacks and stuff like i don't think there's a cheat code to paying off your debt i i think you just got to be disciplined and so like in my case like my mentality like you were mentioned buying food with credit card debts like or with credit cards um like when i buy food it feels like i just paid that with cash like even if i use a credit card because i'm like like i look at the six dollar transaction like good god like I just spent six, <laughs> but like, yeah. so most of my transactions from a credit card are like either bills or it's, um, it's for like the remodeling materials. So it's something to do with like real estate or just bills or with whatever, something, something related to not leisure, I guess you could say. Right. And right. so that's the way I manage that. And I think, and I always have in my mind, I, I don't let it get past X amount of dollars or whatever. So yeah. I will pay it, I will pay it down. And then before interest hits, I make sure it's paid off. So I'm not paying interest on it. So I think it's just a matter of habits and mentality discipline as far as paying your cards or making sure you don't have that debt. For the people trying to give hacks and cheat codes, I think that works for people that already know how to manage their money and use um, a credit card. Because, like, I got tips from the first time I ever started getting credit cards was like listening to Graham Stephan. Because I always just affiliated credit cards with debt and just thought, 
there was no benefit. So I'm like, why would I use a credit card and then pay it back when I could just use my debit card? But then when I found out there was like free interest and then there was cash back, I was like, okay, well, there's perks to it if you manage it correctly and you take advantage of it, which credit cards companies don't expect you to do because most people, yeah, they use the perks, but then they fall into the trap of racking up so much debt they can't get out of it. And so if you use it to your advantage because you know how to manage the cards or know how to manage your money, then it can be a benefit to you. And I also had a friend that did the same and showed me some guidelines to things he did to take advantage. Yeah, um, my view on it is first off, like for me, all my credit cards, I, I will not spend if I don't if I know I don't have the money in the bank. I won't spend the, the credit card. Right, exactly. Uh, because, I mean, for me, soon as the transaction, I don't wait for a bill to come to say, hey, this is how much you owe. Soon as the transaction shows up, I pay it. So if I swipe my card today, two days later, it's going to show up that I owe. And then I just transfer the money from a bank account. And then the reason why I use credit cards for everything instead of debit cards, it's just for the liability standpoint. Like you said, credit card companies are going to quickly dispute when it's their money banks they they're not gonna be in a rush i mean i've been in times where somebody i used the debit card to get gas a guy was running all up and down florida getting gas all over florida and then i was like that's not me it took days uh i've, I've heard stories of weeks and months it took people to get their money back but if it's a credit card and somebody go run up like hey that's not me they cut it off and then restore the money instantaneously so that's why i use it i don't want no liabilities out there so everything i do i just use a credit card but going to the aspect of the credit repair, the only the, the only hack to repairing your credit is paying what you owe. I mean, yes, you can you can let it go in collections and then you can go call the people. Uh, you can call the people in this, you know, the debt collectors and come to a, a shorter a balance of what you owe. That is true. Uh, I don't believe people should go to debt collectors because everything a debt collector can do, you can do yourself. I mean, I've I've done it with family members. They had debt in collections. I just called the debt collector, agreed to a lower number. They accepted the lower number. And sometimes the lower number was 50% less than what they owed. And then I just had the family member pay the, pay the balance off and then it was off their credit. Um, the one key aspect that I don't believe the people that's always on social media talking about, oh, you can get business credit. The truth of it is I have business credit cards. Your business credit card is backed by your personal social security number. So yeah, you got the EIN, you put it in the EIN, but they still ask for a personal authorizer social security number on it. So that's just in case you screw them over on the business side, they have somebody personal to go after. So if you can't handle your own personal finances, getting a doing a credit card hack to you know get an EIN number or whatever, it still is coming back to a person. That is the thing. Everybody makes it, oh well, yeah, you know, I just use a business credit card and it, it don't affect me. It it will affect you if you don't know how to handle it, maintain it, and things of that nature. Alex, you said it best. Is all of these tools that you can use a credit card for is for people that understands and are financially literate to do it. It's not just for the layman that's just sitting there, oh, I got a 325 credit score and I need to get a credit card to get more debt. We're just going to get more debt. You just go, if you find the hack and then you get a business credit card and they somehow give it to you because you escaped the matrix, it's still coming back to a person. So people need to understand that avenue and aspect of it it's still comes back to a person even if it's business credit as in the business credit card or something of that nature it's not just willy-nilly i can put my eian number in no now that entity is the only one responsible if that entity fails when it comes to business credit cards it comes back to the person who whose entity it is so if you can't handle your financial responsibilities on a personal level don't think that you cheated the system because you're going to get a business card and no, it won't affect you. The hack to credit cards and being good with credit cards is being financially responsible and taking care of yourself and taking care of it yourself. That's what I'm meant to say. Yeah, and I always get the question from people that like just starting LLC, like 
those PPP loans or whatever. They're like, oh, why don't you get a, those business loans? Why don't you get a business credit card? Like, I think the only reason, and this is just my opinion, but the only reason to take out business debt is if you, first off, have an operation going, you have income coming, and the plan that you have that's that you're executing with that business debt would show you an immediate return. Don't just take out debt because, oh, I have a business, let me get money, and then not know where to use it to pull in revenue for your business. It makes no sense. So mostly in business, like from my LSE, I'm just paying cash for all the inventory, and it's just a lot of cash transactions. Not like physical cash, but like I'm not using credit for those transactions. But that's just my view. I think it's very like immature in business for someone to just start up and just try to get a ten thousand dollar credit line or something like they don't have any income coming in right yeah yeah and like for me i i use me as all transactions go through the card unless i get some vendor and i don't know in 2023 2024 how you don't you know accept payments other than cash but unless i got a vendor like that that just only accepts cash then I'll, you know, write them a check or I'll just give the cash. But besides that, everything else is, is done through credit. But again, I'm not spending money that I don't have. I swipe with the card. Mm. Then when it shows up, the business account pays it. I don't just sit there and be like, oh, well, yeah, let me just, let me just run up $20,000, $20,000 in debt just for the hell of it, just to go do something for no reason that won't give me a return. I mean, when you say instant return, I'm thinking, it has to give me a return in six to 12 months max. If it's not giving me a return by the end, I'm not just going out there because the interest rates on those credit lines, on those credit card lines, they're so expensive. If you're not paying that off fast, then whatever return you got from the investment, it don't even matter because now it's going to the credit line. Yeah. So you're exactly. still back in the same position you was. Exactly. Yeah. So that means say, guys, if you have any questions or comments, let us know down below. Uh, hit that like button, share this video, subscribe, and we will see you guys on the next one.